What's good, guys? It's your favorite cl blind cookie boy here. <laughs> so, today I went in just for uh, a few hours. Um, just for the fun of it, really. Really, it was more of a... Um, a wake-up call, I would say. Just to see others that I've, I, I knew for a while, uh, other co-workers, whatnot. But moreover, to see what it is I used to do. You know, it's been a while since I've had to do any of that. Um, of course, it's like riding a bike, you know. But now. I went in and I did five cases of cookie cake, right? So out of each case, I get 15 cakes. So today I did 75 cakes that I kneaded out by hand. Uh, my back of my hand is hurting pretty good, but not, not bad, you know? But, you know, it's... It's interesting to go back to where you came from, even if it's just for a day, you know? And I did 75 cakes like that. It took me roughly five hours, so from 11 o'clock till four o'clock today. For three pieces of paper. 50 bucks. Now, you know how fast it, you can go through 50 bucks? I mean, and that was five hours of labor. Now, granted, my, in my situation, you know, I was diagnosed blind, had nothing and nobody. You know what? I was happy and thankful for that 50 bucks. Because with that 50 bucks, I put all of every dollar of that into crypto. And I did that for five years. So from 2015 till the beginning of the pandemic in the crypto. I began in crypto in 2014. So, back when you could buy an ounce of gold for $1,300, or at that time, $1,300 would get you like 6.2 Bitcoin. So, to go back to where I came from was really eye opening to, for me to realize. I don't want to say luck or lucky because uh, there was a lot of a lot of just grinding um, see I, I worked for crypto not for dollars but today it was really eye-opening to go back in there and go see everyone working and working hard and while I was there overhearing other stories, right? About different things needed to be fixed. They didn't have money. They, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's a never ending cycle. And then with debt on top of it. So uh, being a debt slave, I did what I did because I had no debt. I had debt, I paid it all off, except for the house, so, whatever, um, but I mean, wow, dude, $50, 10 bucks an hour, and I worked, I worked, yeah, now I 
what I've paid these contractors to do little jobs here and there, I mean, whether that be like a $4,000 job, a, almost a $5,000 job, yeah, it might have taken four days to do it, but a $1,000 a day for a job to get done, now that's just labor, that's not materials, you know, but it, these were things that I could not do myself, so I, I had to do that, but yet I'm looking at all these people working, and it's part of their daily life to go to work, come home, take care of the family, try to get a little bit of rest before doing it all over again the very next day. Now, like I said, I was grateful. You know, the Great American Cookies was the only company who would hire me being legally blind. Everyone else was scared of the... Um, What do you call that? Liability. So, even though I have my own tricks of different things and how I do different things, I know it's a lot different. At times it's more difficult, but it's what I have to do to, and why I say adapt and overcome, right? So I did this job for five years a job that is not glorious it is not there are no bragging rights you know low man on a totem pole not a management position not a paying not not a decent salary not a decent income really but it's all I could get being disabled so I did it but with what I did with that to me is actually amazing but at the same time I bit my tongue every day I did everything no one else would do you know and on top of that a lot of research into crypto I invested every dollar from this job into crypto. And look at what it's done. Look at where I'm at. Like I said, I retired at the beginning of the pandemic. But I go back and I look around and I view things a lot differently right I, I was realizing today that all of these people in the mall shopping and eating and whatnot every one of them was dolled up and dressed up to the hilt their money is going into depreciating assets whereas I was looking at either a preservation of wealth or a way to invest and do without. So that's the route that I chose. I did without and I invested all of it. But I look at these people and they're flashy things, showing off new tennis shoes. I mean, new everything, right? But yet, I'm the one who didn't have a pair of blue jeans without holes in it. I was the one with the socks that were stretched out. I was the one with the shoes that would talk to you. Because I would average hiking over 200 miles a month. 200 miles a month on foot because I can't drive. 
but I did that for the exercise to lose the weight after four years in bed you put on a lot of weight and here recently from after during COVID and all this other stuff I put on a ton of weight so I'm up to 221 right now 221 pounds and six foot one and I'm not happy with my weight. However, I do know how to attack it and go after it. And I'm soon to do that. Um, not as far as a diet. It's just a little bit of a lifestyle change. However, me being a type 1 diabetic, I have to shock my metabolism in order to do such a thing. I know how to do it and I will. It's, it's not a thing of running a higher glucose to then urinate the extra sugar and that if you ever see a diabetic who has drastically lost weight that's why they're out of control their blood sugars their glucose is not in control but a lot of people will praise them that they're doing good that they look great when they know inside they feel like garbage And they don't realize the damage that they're doing to themselves. Now, I did other things for, not for weightlifting, but for, like, to get ripped, that sort of stuff. I did that, you know, for the veins to pop out and all of that kind of stuff. I, I, I did a lot of things I should not have. So, <laughs> and now... Doctors won't prescribe me insulin or additional insulin every month, even just a little bit, because others are selling their insulin to these bodybuilders. And that just blows my mind. These people are more interested in... In, I mean, what they're doing to their bodies is just crazy. Um, yeah, it's just stupid. Just stupid. But no, I'm looking at these people today. And it's like... You know, I say a little bit. I was asked a few things, and I, I said a little bit. You know, I just dropped a quarter million into this property. And, you know, I, I, I understand the thought process there, but it was more like a, it felt as though it was received like a, yeah, right, whatever. Sad thing is, look, I did it. And... They don't want to hear it. It's not my job to push someone. If they want to do something, that's totally different. Same thing with all my friends and family. But you know, not, not one of them has questioned me on it. Of how. Show me. Show me something. Show me how to do it. Why does it have value? Ask a question. None of that. You know, it's... And look, I'm guilty of the same thing. So, before crypto, look, I was a debt slave. Um, I, the hardest thing for me to do when I went blind was to get rid of my assets. You know, I had a... I had a triple black Corvette, 2004 model. And that was in 2011 when I went blind. I had had it like two years. So, you know, still decent, still very nice. Uh, black leather, black and glass top, the removable, all of that. Uh, chip in it, all kinds of stuff. It was, it was bad to the bone. It was a sleeper vet. And... Yeah, and then, you know, the Toyota Camry. So, 
I had like 15 grand just in the audio system. I used to compete nationally. I was a judge for USAC. So, in car audio, back in the day. I used to do sales and install. More so sales. The install bit, I would help out really on bigger projects. So, until there was like sabotage that took over like Master P, Silk the Shocker, C Murder, you know, and here I am doing Silk and and their mother's uh, Lexus, and you know, and this other wacko has just got dollar signs going through his head. He wanted he wanted to jump in and take over, and not realizing that you know he he's got to be back to pick up his mother from the airport. It was only a certain period of time that we had in order to do an install, and it was a good, good audio system. He purposely went back in and sabotaged the whole damn thing. Changed the tuning, everything. It was just, it, I was just pissed off. It was just pathetic, the whole thing. I brought that company millions of dollars. <laughs> and this guy, Anyway, but no, I'm just looking back at these other people, debt slaves, and in a never-ending job. It's like they're not going to get ahead. I've explained several different things over the years working there. Same thing, in one ear, out the other. Nothing resonated. So, um, you know, I, I mean, and look, I, I understand it. You know, they're not ready to hear those things. They're not ready to, they, they can't believe that someone that they know, I guess, did it. Figured it out. Figured out a few things. But I'm just watching this whole rat race all day today. And I'm just blown away. You know. Over three pieces of paper. Three pieces of paper. And they don't even know what this is. They have no idea that a dollar. The dollar is plummeting. It's the Titanic and it's sinking. They don't even realize that this is worthless. Other things around you are going up in, uh, up in price. Okay, perfect example. This same $50 used to buy a gram of gold. Today, what, it, what does it cost you for a gram of PAMP? PAMP gold, right? Any gold, one gram. 70, 75 bucks now. Now, the labor that I put in is still the same. For that same fifty dollars, why has the why has the income not matched the same price as gold? It's because something is wrong. So I don't want dollars. All I want is assets. People look at me funny when I say that, but. Whether that's a crypto asset, gold, silver, lead bullion. I want assets. I don't want dollars. These people are just creating dollars from nothing. And the CBDCs, everyone's going crazy over CBDCs. Central bank digital currency, right? All that is is a digital form of a dollar that will be instant to transfer across the globe. Instant, basically bypassing the SWIFT system. I, I give you that, right? However, it is not crypto. Don't let them fool you. Cryptocurrency is based on a blockchain where you can actually go in and verify. You can verify the transactions. You can see what wallets are accepting what. 
over a period of time. Basically, what money goes where? There's an accountability there. That, with this, I don't even think we know how many of these there are. I really don't. Whether that's within the United States border or and or overseas, right? And people claim that, you know, it's it's digital. It's because it has a, a, a number on a screen. They think that that is digital and it is not. And that is still analog. They see digits on a screen and they think it's digital. That's not. It's analog. I mean, I could go back to the 1970s and get a calculator. Yeah, it has a digital has digital numbers on it. Zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to nine. Really? It says digital, right? I mean, look at the PCs back then. Yeah, the IBM, the old IBMs before the Commodore 64, right? And that was digital. That was not digital. What is out there right now is not digital. It still takes three to five days for a transfer. The things that are coming from cryptocurrency are going to completely catch everyone by surprise. Those of us in it, we already know. So it's just a waiting game. Other things that are happening, they will happen fast. Um, these people don't understand. They, I, I don't think they will understand until it's too late. You know, when that mad dash happens in the crypto, you know, all of our lives are really changed when the moment that others realize what's going on and they're, they realize that there's an issue. When they realize that there's an issue and because they heard it on CNBC, right? It's like there's no thought process involved. So I guess it's just what we're taught. I was telling a co-worker today that even in my own family, hello, <laughs> even in my own family who ran businesses, uh, many, there was no financial education even within the family. And the school system doesn't teach you a thing of, of credit, finance, nothing. And of course, once you go to college and you go to corporate finance, you know, it's funny, the ones that got degrees in corporate finance, I'm the one that used to write their papers, got A's on complete different sides of the market. So, and another big disconnect, they think that the economy is doing well because the stock market is up. The stock market is not the economy. Did you know that the Dow is only based on 30 stocks? And they're able to go in and change it. it you know, you tell me where, I, I doubt IBM is being, is part of the Dow. I, I doubt uh, Texas Instruments is part of the Dow or Georgia Pacific, really. I doubt any of those are part of the Dow now. It's just the fangs, Facebook, Apple, Google, you know, those kind of things. So they manipulate those things around you. And it's like the S&P 500. Should be like the S and P twenty, S and P ten. You know, 
from watching, from going through different markets and watching buybacks and mergers and acquisitions, it's all fluff. All of it. So they artificially, okay, while, the, while your credit is cheap, it's cheap money. You can borrow money cheap. These companies borrow a lot of money and then go back and buy up their stock and raise the price and everyone's in la la land. Well, what happens when all of a sudden interest rates change? The value of your stock is going to go to, it's going to crash. So I'm not in equities for anything. Used to be. I used to do well. But it's all fluff. Smoke and mirrors. The day they realize what's been going on, that the stock market is not the economy, that these companies have artificially inflated their value, and the debt that they owe is not sustainable. Who's going to bail them out? You and me. All the taxpayers, yet again. However, now, instead of it being too big to fail, I think that there will be, if they try that, I, again, another 2008 if they try anything like that now I think that there will be a revolt not just oh a, a Twitter message you know I did my part I, I, I posted a tweet I think those people will be sought after I mean, look at the property values around you, right? What today is worth 600000 not long ago wasn't worth, what, 150 How does that happen? When those interest rates change and they go back to normal, like 7 to 10% interest rates, I would say is normal throughout history every time the Federal Reserve steps in and changes the interest rates not like by 25 basis points not a quarter of a percent that's bullshit that's theater that's all that that is that's but and then after 10 years then they go back and revise it oh no we were incorrect over the last 10 years no one no one cares about it if it's printed on page 24 of section c of the newspaper right who saw that no one did i did revision 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 it's been a lie When things happen, they will happen quick. And those of us already in crypto, I'll say it this way. If you're in crypto, you're way ahead of the game. Not even specific ones, just everything across the board. Do you understand that there's going to be like such a mad dash in the crypto? financial institutions they're already trying to get involved hell they'll sell it to their their uh, upper echelon clients at 10x the price so if they want a, a full litecoin they got to pay instead of it being $200 like you and I can go on the in exchange and buy it for right now they're selling it for 2000 a coin You don't think they know something? I mean, 
think of it this way. These major corporations, they're dropping hundreds of millions of dollars each into this. It's the next system. I hope you understand that. They don't just throw money like that at anything. You know, just because someone has an idea on Shark Tank, you think they're going to throw them $300 million? You bumped your head. Look around at everything that's about to go down. And look at those around you. And look at how they live their life daily. And I can't give advice here or of any kind. You know, I, I don't have a license. Uh, I'm I'm just a dude who did did it. You know. But if I could give some sort of advice, maybe go ahead and. Pay off your bills. Pay off your debt. Pay off your debt and pay yourself that 30% interest. Pay yourself that 30%. But then apply that 30% to your dollar cost average. Monthly. Bi-weekly. Whatever. Put a little more in every time. You know? Get a few extra hours every week. A little overtime maybe. Second job even. A yeah, cash job on the side. Go cut grass. Hello. <laughs> go cut grass. Go go do something. And then you'd be amazed what this will do. Like what I did. Took me five years. But really? I'm just a blind cookie boy. The part time guy scooping cookies and kneading cakes and baking them off. I was only working five hours a day. Sometimes not even five days out the week. Some days, it, or some weeks, it was only three days out the week. I did it. The thing is, you can't help everyone, even though you know how. You can't help those who don't want to help themselves. If they have questions, I'm available. I'll show you how to do it, but I refuse to do it for you. I'm just amazed. It's the same thing, never ending cycle. Credit card debt out the wazoo. Can't afford a tire for your car. A penny saved is a penny earned. Rather, a cent saved is a cent earned it's not a penny it doesn't say penny anywhere on it it is a cent penny is derived from the british of a pence penny is not written anywhere on a cent it's amazing how much we've lost Like I said, just looking around at people, making it rain. This and that, oh, bling, bling. This and that. I'm like, it would be different if you were using that as an investment, right? So if you were buying the jewelry, like at melt value, like I do, not going into whatever jewelry store, right? I mean, look, would you pay $1,500 for in a jewelry store? I pay like 200 for and it looks identical. It looks brand new. I clean it. All of that. But yet. 
how do they say, keeping up with the Joneses. I did without. Saw the writing on the wall of 2008. So I say 2008 no more. That dude who was at the Bitcoin conference. You get past all the theater and everything else that was there. But what that one dude said, right? The dude who was getting El Salvador involved. What that dude said was spot on. We will die on this fucking hill. Anyway, y'all be cool. Later.